The Dartmouth Atlas has been a familiar part of the American health policy landscape since the mid-1990s. The Atlas monitors health care utilization and outcomes in 306 hospital referral regions across the United States. I'm Gil Welch, and I'm here to interview my boss for the uh, past two decades, Jack Wenberg. And my goal is to communicate Jack's quest to explore the epidemiology of American medical care, how medical practice differs in different geographic regions. It's an intriguing story, one that starts in Vermont in the mid-1960s and is still relevant today as the Dartmouth Atlas continues to monitor what is actually happening to healthcare throughout the United States. Chapter two, the move to Maine. Jack, your work has been uh, deeply rooted in geography, so it's fitting to start with uh, a map of the great state of Maine. Hmm. And to the northwest, uh, of course, is the mountainous portion of the state, and to the southeast is the coastline, uh, uh, quite a considerable coastline. According to NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, it has more tidal coastline than the state of California. Biggest city in the state is Portland in the south. Uh, the capital of the state is Augusta on the Kennebec, and in between is the town of Lewiston. And the largest uh, city down east is Bangor, uh, Maine. So you went to Maine and you looked at uh, hospital service areas again, and here you're looking at uh, the 13 uh, hospital service areas in Maine, and you considered a bunch of surgical procedures, appendectomy, prostatectomy, et cetera, but you also looked at tonsillectomy, as you did in uh, Vermont, and you found, again, striking variation in all procedures. In tonsillectomy, the low rate was uh, 23 per 10,000. Uh, the high rate was 122 uh, per 10,000. But you also found something else. Uh, tell us about this graphic. Well, this, this is uh, one of my, f my favorite uh, graphs. It, it basically dawned on us as we looked at these rates uh, that what was a high rate in one area was a low rate in another area. Wow. And there was just no consistency. So you, even though the all overall sur rate of surgery was the same between these communities, how they used surgery varied to an extraordinary degree. Take example of Portland, uh, where in the purple we see the prostatectomy rates, which were 40% higher than the uh, state average. Look over at Augusta, and they're 23% below the state average. On the other hand, uh, varicose veins in Augusta are almost 90% above the state average, while in Portland they're 26% or 28% below. In any case, uh, what's really important here is the utter chaos in terms of the way healthcare is delivered. Pe most people will come to the to the idea of healthcare as having uh, a scientific basis and having also uh, uh, a, a genuine uh, uh, a f a um, relationship between the doctor and the patient, which makes sure that decisions are based on the patient's needs and wants. Not so. Mm. This is what we see. This is just not Portland. Lewiston and Augusta, this is the pattern across the country. And, and, and what led you to call this a surgical signature? Well, that was just a shorthand to say, look, if you know this profile in year one, you can pick it out in year two, and year three, and year four, because these variations are highly consistent from one year to the other. So you could actually recognize the geography of, the, of this place by knowing what its surgical profile was. Uh, it's, it's kind of a code based on medical care. Well, uh, l l let me direct our viewers to Augusta. Uh, and uh, again, as Jack uh, mentioned, that uh, green shows a very elevated rate of varicose uh, veins. And then the uh, red right to the left of it uh, shows that hysterectomy rates are uh, a third lower than normal. Um, and one can imagine this uh, just being seen visually without any labels. Uh, and uh, I know you never liked this analogy, Jack, but I, I think of this as like a, a gene array, an expression array. And you're looking at here's varicose veins and there's a hysterectomy uh, being low. And you imagine looking across years and stuff, it's easy to pick out Augusta. There it is, yeah. they're here, and there it is uh, here. But, and know, that's what you meant by the surgical well, well, signal. Exactly, but I also uh, complain about your analogy. Okay, because, that's fine. Because, you know, the genes are based on nature. The, the variation is based on doctors. 
<laughs> which you could say are part of nature, but <laughs> it's really important to make the distinction. Okay. And also, uh, these things add up to huge differences. Right. Like, like for example, the Lewiston situation you mm. mentioned. I think it was over five years we saw three thousand more hysterectomies wow. than expected. Wow. Had the rate from the other. Uh, and had real effects on populations. Yeah, real effects real on effects. populations. Well, you uh, published this work uh, in an article entitled uh, "Healthcare Delivery in Maine." Uh, a series of three articles uh, with uh, Alan Gittleson again. Um, and this came out in 1975 in the Journal of the Maine Medical Association. Mm -hmm. now, now, why not the New England Journal or JAMA? Well, we were still kind of on uh, non-speaking terms, I think was fair to say then. But uh, there was a, a more direct reason here, and that was because, first of all, uh, we wanted uh, to uh, be able to describe what was actually going on in, in the place where the journal covered. Right. And the main medical journal uh, basically was for main physicians. Sure. So we wanted to establish a feedback, basically, that way in there. And, and secondly, the editor of the um, journal, uh, Dr. Dan Hanley, uh, became a really important person in the whole feedback uh, of data in Maine and led to the patient outcomes research teams and to a whole bunch of things that uh, uh, we're now pretty well known for. So, so the main uh, situation was not just to replicate, which was mm -hmm. important, but it was actually initiated a, a long series over 20 years of trying to, to do outcomes research and trying to figure out which rate is right. And you saw Maine as fertile ground in part because of Dr. Hanley, is that correct? Because of Dr. Hanley and his influence on the physicians in Maine. He could bring them together, we could discuss the rates, and we could be begin to debate them. Mm -hmm. And then when we developed the patient outcomes research teams, we were actually able to take some of the residual uncertainties, like why do a prostatectomy, and actually solve that question. Mm -hmm. Uh, to a to a, a a way that has substantially influenced U.S. healthcare since then, particularly urology. Well, let's just talk about the uh, patient outcome research teams for a second. They were called ports for short, and here is the list of the ports that were active in uh, uh, 1990. And the first port was for prostate enlargement, and it was yours. It was uh, awarded to Dartmouth uh, College. Uh, but, of course, there were others across the country, a, a port stuttering heart attack, uh, one studying back pain, cataract surgery, knee replacement, gallbladder disease, mm -hmm. hip fracture, diabetes, and pneumonia. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to move on to the well, first... Just a minute, Gil. Okay, Let me yeah. just interrupt to say that, that this patient outcomes research team uh, is the uh, predecessor to the current medical effectiveness research program that's going on absolutely and picked up from that so so this was a really the, important this idea lives on it does yes, uh, it does. yes. well I, also in these articles it was the first time I I see some graphs uh, appearing and, and these are uh, obviously hand done it's before uh, microcomputers allow good graphics and they're scatter plots and a little bit of typing a little bit of handwork and maybe a little hard to see so I've uh, sort of summarized them uh, here in these two graphs, and I, I want to ask you, what was the relationship you saw here, and why was it so important? Oh, I'm sorry that my, I'm very sentimental about those <laughs> graphs. I'm sorry to see you throw them out so <laughs> glibly, but uh, no, 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 quite right. Uh, what, we're saying, what we're seeing here is the relative importance of two components of the equation which determine how many days people spend in the hospital. So we put hospital days on the, on the vertical axis, and we ask what's the relationship between the admission rate, per capita admission rate, in each of the regions, and hospital days, and we see a huge, strong correlation. That's what we're looking at on the That's left. That's what you're looking at on the left. Right. When we compare it with the length of stay, how long patients were in the hospital, lo and behold, there's very little relationship. Mm -hmm. Now, why is this important? Well, first of all, most of the utilization review, all the efforts to discipline the markets in those days was focused on reducing length of stay. Like DRGs. Like DRGs. And we became quite clear quite early that all that would do would be open up hospital beds for additional admissions and higher costs. Right. So we were quite critical of the DRG system from the very beginning in terms of its intended purpose. Right, right. Uh, but this whole idea that's, that's, that's incorporated in this, in this figure here is, illustrates the importance of population-based yeah. information. You have yeah. to have a denominator and you have to have a numerator. Right. Length of stay you can calculate without knowing it. Right. It's just 
days uh, divided by how long they were in the hospital. Right. But to know the admission rates, you have to know how many people are being served by the hospitals. Right. In these, and that was the secret of small area analysis as we evolved it. Well, in Maine, you found that uh, geographic areas had surgical signatures. Uh, distinct patterns in the utilization of specific operations, patterns that persisted across time. You found that doctors were again interested in this problem and doctors who recognized that these variations reflect uncertainty, uncertainty about what is the right thing to do. It was the motivation for outcomes research. In our next episode, we'll follow you to Boston and New Haven.